So, what I want to talk about today, in the spirit of, of Christian education, is making the sign of the cross. And you see that we make the sign of the cross often in the church, and just in case you're wondering how to do it, we have these three fingers here. And anyone want to take a guess at what these three fingers represent? Father, Son, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. What are these two fingers doing over here? Two natures. Two natures of Christ. Why? Whoever, whoever was your Sunday school teacher, they get a gold medal. So we have the two natures of Christ, and we have the three fingers. Now what's interesting is, in the olden days, it was actually done like this. And, and it, so you had the Trinity down here, and then you had the two, the, the cross, being formed with the fingers, and they also said that what the, these represent the two natures of Christ, and this was his, his divine nature, and then his human nature, sort of the bent one. But, but that one eventually got to do it this way, and I think it just got too complicated, so they said, this one's easy, we can teach kids to do it, let's all do this one. And so we have these three fingers, and we always start with our heads because we love the Lord with all our mind, and all our heart, and you know, it usually goes somewhere down here, sometimes it ends up in your stomach, and that's where some people think, so it's a good connection. All our mind, all our heart, and then we go over to the right shoulder, and all our, all our strength, we love that, that's the two shoulders here. And we always end up on the heart side. And you'll see, actually, some of you can see people give a little tap on the heart afterwards, uh, just to emphasize that. But we love the Lord with all our mind, with all our heart, with all our strength. And this represents the sign of the cross. And, um, you know, we do it all the time. Sometimes we even do it, we don't think about it. Uh, we have certain places that we always just do it, like whenever we go to church, and everything else. You might have heard a, a church mentality. Um, um, you might walk into an office building and make the sign of the cross. Why do you do that? You're going into your door, you're kind of used to that. But it's it's an idea that um, oh, we, we use it when we we say the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And then you notice when we cross this median line here, people stop to make the sign of the cross. And they know why. It's because the gospel, the gospel, the, the gospel. It's actually the, uh, it, it has to do with the, uh, the, the presence of, uh, the center of the Orthodox altar is the, is at the center of our table is the gospel book. And so when we, that's why when we do service, if this, if we move the gospel book out here, this becomes the center of the service. We don't move the, the tabernacle with the, uh, the gifts. In the West, in the Catholic Church, it's, the, it is the, um, the, uh, re the reserve sacrament that they have is in their tabernacle, and that is the, that is the, uh, the center part of their altar. But in the Orthodox Church, it's, it's the presence of the gospel books. We always stop and we make the sign of the cross whenever we, we pass through here. Um, but, so the question then is, is why do we do this? Can't we just think about it? Where a pen comes in handy. And now you're going to see why I'm a priest and not a professional artist. I'm going to try to make a straight line. I've been practicing all week. Okay. This is a triangle, and this represents not the Trinity. This represents human beings. And Human beings are made in three, let's say, there's three elements that make up a human being. And the first element is the body. The body is part of who we are. We do not believe that, for example, a, a human being was sort of like a, there's this, this wonderful little light bubble floating around called soul, and then somebody took it, stuck it in a body. The body and soul and, and eventually we're getting to the third part, are all created together at the moment of conception. They're united as one. All of these elements make up a single person. 
in other other let's say religious ideas, they have this idea that well the souls pre-exist and God takes made them separately and he puts them in a body. Uh -oh, we don't buy that. So here's the body, our physical manifestation of ourselves. The second element is the soul. This is the energy driving force of our bodies, and it is also the, where we, our minds come into play here. The bodies, the body experiences what? Senses, smell, touch, taste, sight, um, and but then all of those things get routed to the soul, to the mind, and we think about it and we go, oh, it's, it's Aunt Gertrude, give her a hug. Or it's, oh, it's, it's a, a guy with a meat cleaver, run, all right? The mind then tells the body, run, Forrest, run, and the body does it. <laughs> you're getting, you're with me on this. Some people are giggling, so I know that they're, they're the ones that are awake. I didn't put you to sleep yet. Keep that way, please. Um, so the body and the soul are, are, again, part of this human person, part of who we are. There's the third element, and this is our spirit. And this is the means by which we are connected to God. This is, this is our, 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 our spiritual element. And in our society, this is really undervalued, okay? We tend to look at religion, for example, people come to church because they get a certain physical response from it, we call that what? Emotions, right? They go to church to get happy. You ever seen those pictures of people, maybe you've been to those churches before, people like really, they start jumping and, and, and now there's like people actually take videos of those things and they send them to rock music and put them up on there and you can watch people kind of jumping up and down. It's kind of interesting. Um, but that's a physical emotion, okay? That's not a spiritual experience. Now, there are other people that, that, the, the, that their, their faith, their connection to God, is an intellectual one. They like to think about God. They like to have godly thoughts. They like big, thick books on theology. And 